All right. Well, um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's COIL presentation. Uh, my name is Gary Chin. I'm going to be handling introductions today uh, of our speaker. Um, I'm the director of the eLearning Institute in the College of Arts and Architecture. Freshly minted as of? Uh, May 1st. May 1st. Officially. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, very excited to be uh, introducing Patricia Butler today. Um, did want to take a moment to say thank you to the Center for Online Innovation and Learning for providing the opportunity to discuss uh, video and um, online instruction, which is a very relevant topic for many of us. Um, Patricia Butler is CEO and co-founder of Artists Works. Um, I don't know if she'll mention during the course of her presentation, but Patricia is an alum of Penn State uh, from the Du Bois area originally. Has a bachelor's degree from Penn State um, and uh, studied flute here, uh, as well as uh, being a student in the business school. Um, Patricia lives in uh, Napa, California, currently. So if you have um, wine recommendations, <laughs> you can put them in the chat box. Uh, try to work that on the side. Um, Artist Works is the, the group that Patricia is the co-founder and CEO of. Uh, partners with instructors to bring individual feedback and guidance uh, to the online student experience via the online video exchange learning platform, which is, I think, going to be the bulk of what we hear about today. Um, and uh, I'm sure Patricia will get into greater detail on how the, um, how the online video exchange uh, learning platform works. Uh, but ArtistWorks works with instructors to assist students in mastering highly specific skills through demonstration. Um, and in addition to the video-based instructor-supported uh, refinement that uh, is enabled, uh, students can also be grouped together. Uh, the term that she used when we met last time was hubbing, which was the first time I heard that. That was a very interesting way to, to uh, think about um, online uh, communities and learners. So hopefully we'll learn a little bit more about that as well. Uh, so with all that said, um, I'll hand it over to Patricia to tell us more about um, the platform and uh, ArtsWorks. Thank you, Gary. That's really a, a very kind um, and informative introduction, and you are right. Um, I am an alum from uh, Penn State at University Park, and uh, that was way back in 1983. <laughs> uh, and um, I am also the CEO of Artist Works here in Napa, California. And our uh, invention is uh, called Online Video Exchange Learning. And um, it's a robust e-learning platform that can be used for formal education, but it's also now being used for living room learning, or, or what we refer to as lifestyle learners. So I'm just going to jump right into the presentation here so that I don't take up too much of your time. But I want to save time at the end for people to ask me questions, of course, about online video exchange learning. Uh, but also about wine, because everybody uh, wants to know. <laughs> and I'm quite happy to answer those questions. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you can see only my presentation on the screen right now. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. That's super. OK, good. So let's start with the question. What's missing in online education today? Well, the media has made a concerted effort to really shine the spotlight on dropout and failure rates of MOOCs. And researchers at the University of Pennsylvania say that within the first two weeks, almost all of the students that are enrolled in MOOCs have lost their interest, and that fewer than 10% actually complete the course. And there may be really a lot of reasons for that, um, lack of commitment and engagement, and it could be that students are just not taking the prerequisite courses, or worse, the prerequisite courses just aren't even being offered. Uh, it also could be that free education just isn't valued highly enough. Uh, but it also could just be that you know the greatest things in life maybe really aren't free. Um, but if we fly up a little bit, um, let's say 10,000 feet, we want our country's educational standing to rise. And we want our workers to be well educated. We, together, have to engineer the right experience so that students have the same or better support tools and get the better online learning outcome 
uh, just like they would get in the classroom. But we also think there's something else very important that is missing with online learners today. Meaningful connections to human beings, including their teacher. A commitment to the learning experience and engagement with the material, with the teachers, and with the students are essential elements to a valuable education. And it doesn't matter whether it's online um, or on campus. Uh, but right now, these are areas of very serious weakness in the market right now. Uh, online, learner, online learners just really don't feel truly connected to their teacher and to the spirit of the university. And I don't think those people will be very involved alumni either. So we're looking for meaningful connections to human beings. Many online courses, including my own American Lit course that I took at Oxford University online, um, are really kind of lists of assignments that are on a calendar. There's titles to read uh, for books, and they provide PDFs as well as forums to participate in. So all that information is on the website. The syllabus is there. But the students are kind of left without a human bond and a connection to their teacher. And just to tell you a little bit about um, my American Lit course at Oxford, and I know that seems a little odd, but um, I think we're going to throw them under the bus a little bit here. <laughs> um, I got all the information on the website. It was all there. And I, of course, diligently am following week by week how much I should read, what homework I should do, and I'm participating in the forums. But it turns out that not everybody progresses at the same time. And the focus really did seem to be on the teacher just getting the syllabus there so that we all knew what the schedule was and what we were supposed to do. And, and the focus was not on whether or not I was comprehending the subject or achieving their expected learning outcome. So I posted on the forums, but then what I found was that students would wait till like right before the assignment was due, and then all of a sudden the forums would pick up. But they were backtracking to the old forums and trying to have conversations on the old topics. So it was a very disjointed experience, and certainly the conversations were disjointed as well. And some of them were even irrelevant in time. And um, I will also say that the last time uh, I was in Penn State, um, I had an interaction with one of the World Campus Online students. Uh, and I met him at the Nittany Lion Inn, and uh, ironically, his name was Brad. And he just very gently came into the conversation that Herbert and I were having, and Larry as well, and, and kind of said, oh, you know, I'm taking some courses at the World Campus Online, and um, I really expected there to be a lot of video lectures. And those would be my substitute for being on campus. And there were no videos at all. And he said, I'm, and these are his words, I was shocked at how little interaction there was. So you've got two data points here. And the question is, are they representative of what everybody else is experiencing? And this is not all the fault of the university. Uh, learning management systems, I think, is a little bit of a, a misnomer, when they, at least when they were first created. I think they really were more teacher management systems and kind of focused on the administrative aspects of teaching and not really the student's experience or the outcome. Um, although the tide's beginning to turn, we personally think that students need tools to learn more than teachers need more tools to organize. So what else is missing? Well, we think guided flipped learning is also missing. And the flipped classroom concept is powerful even and especially if it's done online correctly. So if the real work is to happen between the teacher and the student when they gather, then words on a website just do not suffice. Successful productive learning at home is really rooted in relevant hand-selected, or maybe the word everyone's using now is curated lectures um, that the teacher decides need to be featured um, or updated so that the students can learn more productively at home. And that's flipped learning. Professors right now really are reteaching their class. So every, every time they have a class, they reteach the same lecture. They reteach the same class semester after semester, year after year. And there's 
because they're repeating themselves so much, there's no real time for actual mentoring. It's really mostly lecturing. And repetition of the same lecture can kind of become uninspired and, and maybe even unchallenging to the teacher. Also, one lecture is limited to only the students that are in that room and hopefully paying attention at the time. And that means that the teacher's time and their knowledge and their talent just aren't leveraged. There is a disappointing and noticeable dearth of, on, of the arts in online education right now. They're very visually taught and learned, and you just can't effectively teach an instrument or painting or dance with words or an article to read. And you can't effectively learn it just by watching a video. That's a one-sided learning experience, and it isn't a learning conversation, and that is what's required for visually taught subjects. So what's the solution? Um, what we're here to talk about today is online video exchange learning, and that provides a leverage of the teacher's time through asynchronous video exchanges with their students. And those video exchanges are then made visible to the entire online classroom. And that could be hundreds of students. Um, it could even be thousands of students over time. So what's a video exchange? Well, within the video lecture library that is created, the teacher identifies a skill that needs to be evaluated. And this is really key. There is a video lecture library, something that I just don't see very often. And the teacher is identifying a skill that they want the students to master in order to progress. They want the learning outcome to be better, so they're pointing out this critical thing um, that needs to be evaluated by them. So students can use their iPhones or their webcams, and they record themselves practicing this skill. And then they upload it on our platform. And the teacher, throughout time, uh, checks their video cue and then responds with a video of assessment or maybe further instruction. And this is where it can get really personal. Some students might need a couple of video exchanges on one particular topic, and others might just need one. But again, we're improving learning outcomes here. So the student gets what they need. And they're shown where they're going wrong, how, and really importantly, what they need to do to do this right. So problems and questions from students can be very, very different. And hearing the teacher's different perspectives and answering those questions can be very, very valuable. So how do we create a video exchange? We take that student's submission and the teacher's video response, and we keep them paired together. So now your, your teaching and your learning are still in context. And we post them on the site so that all of the students can see it. And, and now your highest level of learning is a two-sided conversation and a human personal interaction that everyone benefits from. So now the teacher's time and the teacher's reach is leveraged. So this combination of video exchanges uh, and a video lecture library provides the flipped classroom. So your video exchange opens that visual common, uh, excuse me, the video exchange opens a visual communication and a connection between the teacher and the student you know, through these little short kind of performances that the student sends to the teacher. But the video lecture library functions as the textbook uh, so that the students can work from that at home. And within this textbook, the teacher is able to point out specific skills that they're going to engage on with the student and kind of discuss them within the video exchanges that are, as I said, open to the entire classroom. So with the video curriculum structured this way, your students' homework time is now on their own schedule and far more productive because you've clearly guided them on what their learning outcome should be, and especially when you're exchanging videos. Our suite of tools for interactions allow your students ample opportunity to get real clarification on the subject and immersion in the online community. Sometimes the world of education is sort of box at socializing online, and it really is a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift with this generation. Uh, they're, they're very accustomed to being connected, sometimes annoyingly, 
uh, and constantly. But now you can use it to your teaching advantage and stay connected with the most productive and instructive socializing that's available. In the last four years, it's really four and a half years, we've taught about 75,000 students using online video exchange learning. And we're a multi-million dollar company. And we're a business that started out of the desire to learn jazz guitar on the internet. Why is it successful? Well, to be honest, because it works. <laughs> Um, people improve faster and they actually learn better with our concept when you compare it to in-person learning. We have very high student engagement on our sites and they have a very strong commitment to the task that they're learning. Um, we can see that there's a visible connection amongst our students uh, and obviously there's a real connection between the students and the teacher and it's, they provide and, and they create a close and and pretty supportive online community. Um, we found that that human connection that video exchange provides um, allows learning outcomes to improve and so student retention goes way up. When students are getting better and, and they're more they're in a learning environment that's more gratifying, they want to stay around and they want to continue their education. So these personal interactions are really far more powerful than just words on a website. We wanted to have a way that these words could come to life. And if you think about it, words on a page can actually lose their meaning. And that's why emoticons have become so popular. Um, just that little animated face that somebody pops into uh, you know, a text or a form gives you an idea of, of maybe how they might be feeling because words sometimes just don't suffice. But with visual feedback and visual assessment, it clarifies everything. All of you know that educators want to leave their mark. They maybe want to leave a legacy to the world. They want to touch their students in a profound and meaningful way, even long after the students are gone from the classroom and they want to see their students succeed. By not capturing, by capturing not only their knowledge, but the act of imparting that knowledge and actually in teaching one of their students is like lightning in a bottle, and that is a teaching legacy. So we say give, this, give the teachers their stage and also give many more students the chance to learn from them. So we asked our teachers, <laughs> Why do they think online video exchange teaching is successful? And really, there, there were way too many for me to, to show you. And you can take a moment and, and read here what Paul Gilbert, Jason Vio, and Christy Peary Skousen have said, and there are several more. Um, but I can sort of give you a synopsis of, of what they said. They don't want to continue to reteach class after class, student after student. They want their time to be leveraged so they can mentor their students on a personal basis and give them the attention that they really truly need. They want to also be able to reach more people in a shorter amount of time than it would take in a university. And we have several teachers that are involved in formal education and teaching in formal education and they're actually leaving. Some of them have left and some of them are considering leaving because they want to teach online with video exchange. Take Paul Gilbert, he's the first on our list here, and he's a multi-platinum recording artist. And uh, at one time, uh, not all that long ago, he was also the chair of the Guitar Institute of Technology, a place where he had been teaching since he was a student. And that was about 25 years ago. He's taught all over the world, he's taught in multiple languages, and yet, since that time, he thinks He's, he's taught maybe 350 or 400 students. But since 2012 online, he's taught 3,500. And he, of course, embraces the technology like a lot of our, our teachers do. And just to prove the point that a teacher can really respond to their students from anywhere in the world, um, he did several uh, video responses from the backseat of a moving taxi cab. <laughs> And it was, it was really very entertaining, but it also punctuated the point uh, that you can really teach from anywhere. And if we just move a little bit to uh, the more 
formalized conservatoire teaching, uh, we would look at Jason Vio. And Jason is the one who said, I've got to do this. I, I can't continue to teach at the conservatory and touch five people a year, five, five guitar students a year. That's it. And he's saying the exact same thing. And he has a legacy to pass on. And he doesn't want to do it five people to the tune of five people a year. I bring up Mike Marshall. I, I bring up Paul Gilbert again and Tony Trishka because these are really our top teachers right now. And they really extol the virtues of online teaching because their stature in their field has changed dramatically. They're now seen as pivotal in perpetuating their genre and also embracing the newest generation of education. Each of them can say that they've taught over 5,000 students since 2011. And all three of them, if I remember correctly, have actually recorded over 3,000 video exchanges. So they're really teaching the world. They're reaching the world. And as I said, sometimes words on a page just have a little less meaning than a personal connection with someone. So let's hear from one of our teachers. I'm Nathan Cole. Nathan I'm Cole. Concertmaster of the Los Angeles Philharmonic and graduate of the Curtis Institute of Music. I've taught at the Chicago College of Performing Arts at Roosevelt University and the Colburn School for the Performing Arts. But now I'm also teaching online with video exchange learning. Now, I like this approach because my students use my pre-recorded video library as a textbook. They work on mastering their skills on their own schedule, so my teaching time is leveraged. I interact with my students using video exchanges. Now, I found that the video exchanges create a human bond, a connection that fosters class retention and a very high level of engagement. And my online students feel that getting visual feedback from me is powerful and meaningful, more so than just reading words on an email or, or trying to work through material in a book or a web page. And over time, my students access this expanding library of teacher and student video exchanges. And the library also represents a continuous refinement of the subject they're studying. And even though I'm just a single teacher, with video exchanges I can reach and teach hundreds of students. It's a powerful and efficient way to learn. So that is Nathan Cole. Um, and you can hear that we all feel the same way about teaching online with video games. Um, the leverage of the teacher's time, being able to leave a legacy uh, that is created by mentoring many students uh, is really important. And because of the features that we have that I'm about to show you quickly, um, we're able to affect better learning outcomes. So what I want to just briefly show you on um, this uh, demo site that we've created is uh, how the video lectures are presented, what the video management system looks like. That's just going to be a brief um, uh, drop in. I want to show you the video exchange library. We also have video transcriptions that allow for a very extensive video search, which is important uh, to learning outcomes as well. And some social features that are uh, really where people get that instructive collaboration. And then uh, What's really helpful is a, a student-centric dashboard where everything is right at the student's uh, fingertips. And we'll talk just briefly about mobile device compatibility. So I'm just going to switch the screen, hopefully successfully, um, to the website, uh, which you were seeing before. There we go. So um, the first thing that I do want to point out, can, I hope everybody can see that all right. Um, this is. Um, our, our latest design, and uh, the reason I bring that up is because it's very important to keep up with trends. We work with the top of the top of the line graphic designer, and um, you'll notice that the trend now is toward much larger graphics, much larger words. There's not a lot of menus. Um, the buttons are bigger, uh, and that's because you want your design to be very compatible with mobile devices and small screens. So this is our latest design. And let's just quickly uh, log in here. And I'm going to be faux student today. <laughs> we had fun making up some names with faux. We have faux ever, faux sure, 
FabFo. I think somebody did FabFo too. <laughs> so let's see, are we logging in here? Okay, so I'd like to show you what some of the critical elements are and um, what you see here is one of our designs and I don't want to spend too much time because it's actually, we've actually moved a little bit away from this particular design but the issue is that over here um, on the left, I hope you can see my cursor, um, are shout outs. And uh, shout outs are, are just really a way for everyone to reach out uh, and, and, and touch other people that are in the school. Long conversations and discussions don't actually happen here. Uh, but this is a video player where the teacher or the university or the dean um, can be in touch with the students in this particular class or maybe even this particular college. So let's take a look at the lessons um, because this is important. Um, all of our lessons in the curriculum are recorded professionally and uh, we have a professional at the helm at every level whether it's uh, you know in the studio with a cameraman or a video editor uh, or the sound guy. So uh, everything looks looks good and looks professional uh, so that you know the technology and the recording don't get in the way of learning. Entertainment recording is very different than teaching recording. So this is just a, a list of potential um, classes uh, that might be within the course of business here. But notice that there's an icon here and that is on the elevator pitch. And that's because this is a particular um, skill that the teacher has deemed important for the student to be visually assessed on. And it, you can even go to, um, let's see, other lessons here, maybe in marketing, and see uh, that you get your lesson list. But there's also one, or maybe there would be two classes where the teacher has identified this particular skill that uh, they want to assess. So let's go back and take a quick look at um, the elevator pitch lesson. This is going to be very brief. I don't want you to listen to the whole lesson. My point is I wanted to get you on the lesson page. And the issue about the lesson page that is really important to understand is that what we want is all the learning materials co-located with the lesson. So this is our... Um, first version of this and you'll see on the tabs up here that you have lesson resources and those can be anything from tools to PDFs or links to articles, other videos and of course we have all of the video exchanges on that particular subject uh, which in this case is the elevator pitch, a place for the student to actually submit a video, very simple interface and then there are lesson comments. So this again is where the conversation really starts getting collaborative. What you're actually seeing here is um, not what we uh, are in the, in, in the uh, process of deploying. Uh, the comments will be far more robust and will include multimedia so students can embed videos, they can record a video right there, uh, include PDFs and, and any other media that is pertinent to the subject. So let's go back to our lesson. Um, this is clearly a three-part lesson, um, and so let's just watch a second of the elevator pitch. What is an elevator pitch? An elevator pitch is trying to convince somebody about your idea. Notice the transcription down minutes. here scrolls along you don't as the speaker your is, story. is talking. You just want to make it interesting enough that the listener wants to continue the conversation with you. So that's Professor Farley, and uh, he has three lessons there on the elevator pitch. And what I kind of wanted to point out here was that here's the transcription. Uh, you can see it if you want, or you can hide it. Um, you can also um, search it. And this is the, the beta version of video transcriptions. But video transcriptions are critical for people that are learning online. They need to be able to find uh, the subject that they're searching for very quickly and everything needs to be right at their fingertips. Uh, so the other thing that's very, very important um, to learn from are the video exchanges. This is what we've been talking about. So 
in this particular instance, we've only got two um, video exchanges, but let's see a video exchange in action. Here's John. Hi, Dr. Farley. John Rafe here. Uh, coming to you with my very first video submission and uh, I'm going to be doing it on the elevator pitch. i uh, put together an elevator pitch for you for a product that actually already exists and may sound a little bit familiar. Uh, this was mainly just an exercise for me to work on the, the flow and, and the building of an uh, elevator pitch. But here we go, and I hope you like it. <laughs> a product I'm working on is basically a combination of uh, online social media with online resumes. Uh, it's, it's basically something to, for you to uh, go on and link up with uh, other professionals in your field or another. So John's clearly doing a pitch on LinkedIn, and he's claiming that as his, his own invention, um, which is fun. But then now, here is, I want to hold on a second. I want to point out here that the teacher's response is always linked with the student's submission. These will always be categorized together. Uh, so that you don't find a repository of student submissions without the teacher's response because then the learning and the teaching are not in context. So here's Professor Farley's response. Huh. Um, that's a really nice catchy name you've chosen. I really think it's going to catch on. With <laughs> um, you've done a really good job describing your product, but an elevator pitch needs to be totally memorized and polished. I'd like to see you send another video with no ums or stammering put in. So, you can see that obviously the video exchanges here are very personalized, high-touch interactions between teacher and student. And, and the students can watch these over and over and over again. And what's important to think about is that if they need clarity in the classroom or on campus, there's a couple of times they're probably going to be willing to raise their hand in the class. But they're not going to raise it. After the third time, they're not going to raise their hand anymore. Um, but when they're learning at home, they're going to watch that video as many times as they need to and at whatever time they need to. So we believe that the video exchange library as well as the video lecture library are, are really very important. So this is the lesson page and the reason it's so very important is because everything's at the fingertips of the student, including the comments um, and uh, as I said, this is a beta version of it, and you will later see that there is allowed to be much more immersive uh, collaboration at the source of the video or of the lesson. So I just want to take you a little bit further um, very quickly and show you the student-centric dashboard. So this is what a student sees when they sign in. And I know this is a lot of information, but this is where we're going to talk a little bit about the hubbing that Gary brought up. So up here in the upper left-hand corner, I hope you can see that. Um, students get an opportunity to, to see what their progress is. How far along in the curriculum are they? How many videos have they watched that they're supposed to watch? This can all be customized for the class. It can be customized for the, the college or the entire university. Um, how many video exchanges have they sent in, and, and where were they the last time they were here? We really believe in gamification, and so we give out badges for uh, particular accomplishments, and the teacher can establish what those accomplishments might be. Um, also here on the dashboard, the teacher can decide that this particular video exchange is so important, I want everybody to see it because it refines a point that is, is critical to learning. Uh, also, the teacher can feature lessons that maybe those are the lessons that everyone needs to watch this week. Um, and also, you can get to all of the lessons just by clicking this button. So down here is really what Gary was talking about in terms of hubbing. And this can be done a couple of ways, but I'm just going to show you here uh, what we do. And the word hub actually did come from the hub, by the way, at Penn State. So um, you can have not only forums that are class specific, but also college specific. So this is just the marketing class chat, and this is all SMEAL college um, chat. So these collaborations happen at all levels, whether it's just between classmates or whether it's between college mates. And then just very quickly, uh, this is what the video uh, lesson page looks like. They're broken down however the teacher wants them to be broken down. And of course, the video exchange library is there as well and you can break them out however you want on the bottom. 
Um, this is the community page. And again, this is where hubbing comes in. Uh, you can see here that this is a, a course for jazz guitar. And so the jazz guitar class has a forum. But people that are studying, studying all guitar also have a forum. And you could have yet another tab that is all music students. Uh, so this is a way for um, incoming freshmen to get initiated into the world. Um, they can also uh, even send in video exchanges with their uh, upcoming teachers so that music students can maybe get a little bit more oriented toward the way the world works. They can enter into individual chats with people just in their class or um, in the class overall. Uh, we have a very easy and simple interface for the teacher uh, so that they can watch their video queue. They just sign into this area and they see all of the schools that they are uh, involved in. As I mentioned to you, uh, it's very important to uh, be compatible uh, with uh, mobile and agnostic for the, the kinds of devices that people are using and that's really where uh, the design uh, comes in and is very critical. Our goal is meaningful, instructive collaboration online that fosters better learning outcomes. This is why we created online video exchange learning. We had the hopes of recreating the same experience that one gets in person, but we actually exceeded it. And as I mentioned to you, our learning outcomes on our sites are actually better than in-person instruction. And the learners are part of this essential online community and they get personally connected online to their teacher and to each other. So we do see a lot of collaboration as well as engagement. Um, some of the questions that we ask are, what, what specifically are we doing that focuses on learning outcomes? The, just the fact that the student's progress and understanding can be visually assessed by an expert. Their learning can be guided by an expert. And it doesn't matter whether you're a beginner uh, or whether you know, you're catching things right away, you're being shown uh, what needs to be worked on next. And then the curriculum is built for online consumption, which differs greatly from on-campus consumption. And we know this really very well. When you get someone uh, visually assessing your skills, obviously you can catch bad habits very early and that builds a stronger foundation. We think it accelerates the learning, and it also certainly increases the gratification of learning. Um, students learn at different evolutionary stages and paces, and so this personal interaction truly helps uh, the students to engage and learn and learn better. There are some other intrinsic opportunities that include expanding your online course offerings to visually taught subjects. As I mentioned in the very beginning, there's a dearth of the arts. Other universities can't offer it, but if you use the online video exchange learning platform that we're offering, uh, you would be able to have an effective uh, and instructive two-way learning conversation with anything that is taught visually. You can also provide continuity of courses. So if you have professors that are on sabbatical or they're touring, um, you're able to have them record their video lecture library. And if you want, uh, the professor can respond from anywhere or the teacher's assistant can respond from anywhere as well. Remember, you know, Paul Gilbert was in the taxi cab. But I also see the library as something that really would help Penn State deepen their faculty bench. Uh, you can hand select um, a professor that maybe is a specialist in his field. Uh, and that includes notable alumni. But what you're avoiding here is that use of the massive kind of ubiquitous free-for-all content that, that is so available uh, to everyone out there. And it doesn't distinguish the student's education. It also doesn't distinguish the university's teaching. With asynchronous learning, obviously the teacher doesn't have to worry so much about scheduling, but their precious time is also freer to actually mentor their students they're ensuring a deeper understanding, and that improves learning outcomes. So we started in music over four years ago. It's one of the hardest topics to learn and master, but we, we launched with it. And we approached it from the learner side because we wanted long distance visual instruction. Uh, and we wanted to be able to share that with people that also had the same passion as we did. So we kind of look at online learning differently 
and it's from the student's perspective. And there's really no LMS or tech company that can even really offer that. Um, so we're rolling out a new service this year for teachers to build their own content based on online video exchange learning platform. And you'd be able to see the results yourself and with your own students. We know how people learn online. We've been doing it for a while. And it's very different than in person. Uh, the experience and the expectations are entirely different. And they need to be understood. So we're not just a tech company. We're not just a tech or admin tool or feature. We're, we're a group of online learners and, as I mentioned to you, lifelong students. And we've brought on world-class instructors. We've developed a really powerful tool for them. And we've also delivered their content and given them the most instructive platform that's available. And they're reaching thousands of students uh, per teacher. And it's, it's our learning system, and, and we have the results to prove its success. So what are the choices going forward for Penn State? Here they are. Um, we believe that you could include Oval as a plug-in to your LMS. Uh, it's a value add feature that gives you the ability to obviously visually assess a skill in many subjects way beyond music. It could be the arts, marketing, law, languages. Um, and you also have the archive video exchange library. And that's available for future learning and refinement of the lesson topic as well. Um, and as I said, uh, implementation is flexible. It can be by class. Uh, it can be by school. It can be by college or even the entire university. And I think that the bigger this goes, the higher the collaboration and the hubbing is key there. In addition to being a technology partner, I think we can be a content partner just using our existing music and art lessons as well as the video exchanges. And you can use that content whole cloth and offer it as an elective to all majors. Um, or you can uh, take the content just as video only um, and not include the video exchange library. Um, or you can take some subset of the content. And it could just be used as maybe supplemental, to, supplemental material or even just as sort of a, a partial textbook. I think that maybe the first steps might be just enroll your students in one of our classes. Let them test the water. See what video exchange is like. Uh, use the content um, and get used to it. Uh, or you can start with recording your own Penn State video lecture library in the most obvious subjects like music, art, uh, and as I had mentioned, marketing, uh, law, sign language, and even business. And it, it doesn't need to be a full university decision or world campus-wide decision like Herbert and I had been talking about for a while now. It really can be class specific. Uh, we're pretty good at this. We're pretty quick at it. So I think that looking at the spring of 2015 for any choice that you make would, would be feasible. Um, we'd really like to bring online video exchange learning to Penn State faculty and to be a part of the university staying on the leading edge of online education. And I, I really want to thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today. I consider speaking with you a privilege. And I hope that I can answer any questions you have. Patricia, thank you. Uh, that was, uh, first of all, you're an amazing presenter. And um, I know you learned that all at Penn State, so that's a good thing. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. I actually have a short list of questions, but I don't want to take them all up. But let me just pick out one or two for you that I was very interested in. Um, one is, you mentioned the term instructional socializing, I think fairly early in, maybe a quarter of the way in. Could you tell us a little bit more about what you mean by that terminology? I did. It's instructive socializing, Larry. And I touched on it maybe without using the phrase multiple times, but it's where you can have a chat room that um, multimedia can be added into. You can have live um, commenting. You can record a video. Uh, the teachers involved, the students are involved, and it's all around the content and at the content. Okay, good. Thank you. 
Um, David Stone has a question for you, um, and I can read it to you from the board rather than you having to go to the chat box. He says, with this kind of system, wouldn't there be a tremendous amount of video captured, which may become unwieldy over time? He put that in there because he knew I couldn't pronounce the word unwieldy. Um, <laughs> What capabilities are there for managing and tagging and inventorying all that content? Oh, it's really not hard at all. You do crowdsourcing. Um, mm. And it's, it, I mean, you got to think like an entrepreneur and not worry about all the hosting and how much work it's going to be for the teacher. Your students want that material to be effective for them. And so they're perfectly willing to say, at 1 minute and 11 seconds, Larry talked about the elevator pitch, and they put that tag in there, and if you have a really good search like we do, your, your search is going to pick up tags, it's going to pick up titles, it's going to pick up forums, it's going to pick up transcripts, and so the students now on that search have everything, and, and it's right there at their fingertips, and they can even save that search. So, Patricia, that happens within the confines of the class that I'm in rather than, say, across classes, or if I'm in a program, say I'm a MBA student and I'm taking a three or four classes at a time, uh -huh. is there a way for it to go outside of a particular class experience? Yes. If you are in other schools, then yes, it can, it can go across. And what's really interesting, I was just actually talking to David about this, um, if you are, I was in an let's see, an investment class at Penn State, and we were getting into regression analysis. And I was pretty good at algebra, but I was not great at algebra. And, and Dr. Bear said, you, you've got to know algebra. And we all sort of needed a little bit of a brush up, but I had taken algebra before. So if I had been online, I'd have been able to access y equals mx plus b. I would have been able to, to, to go back and review that. And, and I, I couldn't do it in the class. So that's where the idea of the library of resources becomes so powerful because I can access content regardless whether it's in my current class or whether it's uh, in, a, in a repository someplace. Yes, it's up to the university how long and um, how much of that content is, uh, remains available to the students throughout time. But I would think you would want to leave it available to them. Yes. Okay, thank you. We'll see if we have other uh, questions from either the group in the room. Rose. I know, I'm guessing Rose does, yes. Hi, Rose. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm well. It's nice to see you. You too. So, um, as you know, music is my life, my passion too. Um, I think I'd like to hear you speak a little bit more about getting videos of the masters because we have so many masters in so many genres and um, they they are the, the flame keepers of not only the past, but I'm thinking of all of the new generation people like Hilary Hahn, who's been mixing all the genres together and performing broadly. So, um, how would you see capturing the masters at Penn State, the the, the elder states people of each um, area of focus, and and what kinds of things could be done with the library of the top educators here? I really think it's, it's critical to have that exhaustive library of high expertise. And I was, a, I was a music major for a while at Penn State until I thought maybe I was going to starve, so I changed my major. And obviously there are incredibly talented people there, um, but almost everyone will say that there's someone better than them in the world. And seeing a performance is really important and understanding um, how your teacher may perhaps interpret that performance. So I think that it's vital to get the masters recorded. I think it's equally as vital to get the Penn State faculty recorded, not just performance, but also what do they have to impart in terms of their legacy. And when you really think about what's happening in the world of music, an area of passion for us, obviously, and we want to have the concert halls continue to be filled, and that won't happen uh, unless the next generation is playing the instrument and has a good, healthy appreciation for music as well. Herbert? Hi, Patricia. Hi, Herbert. 
So you mentioned a little bit, uh, but for the sake of the recording of this session, could you expand a little bit on the aspect of peer learning? So the feedback that I give to a professor or the professor gives to me is available to other people and I can learn from what Larry heard back from the professor and so on. How, how does this wave expand? Can you explain a little bit what the value would be in a setting that is more close to what we do here at Penn State, please? Well, I mean, if you take a look at UCU, which is something that is being used throughout Penn State in, I think, a limited fashion, it's a video, it's a video feature. Um, it doesn't include the ability to collaborate, and, and it, it's, it's just not the whole concept that we have. But what you're talking about is really important because I think some of the most productive learning in a classroom is when someone raises their hand and says, I, can you please clarify this point? I just don't understand it fully. That's when the real learning starts to happen. And that's exactly what you get in a video exchange. Nobody is ever going to submit a video of a marketing pitch or opening um, statements in a courtroom or uh, sign language, it's never going to be perfect. So there's always something to be learned from what the teacher has to say to every student. And because every student absorbs that information differently and that instruction differently, you get this ever growing and expansive and detailed video exchange library. And when I look at UCU, what I, what I could gather was that any type of video instruction or commenting from the teacher is kept private. It's just between the teacher and the student. And I can certainly understand why that may be the preferred way to do it. But there should at least be some selection of those video exchanges that are considered to be instructive and that everybody needs to see. And I don't, you know, I personally don't think you should even take them down from semester to semester. These are valuable personal human interactions between teacher and student. And you, I think there's, what, 12,000 people in World Campus Online? That's the way it currently, you could keep all of them. You could keep all of them up there and, and have something absolutely nobody else has in this business. Nobody online Teaching the world in higher ed has that. Nobody has it. Well, thank you. That's very really cool. What's exciting for me also is I also grow up in arts. And so there's the master, and there are the students around, and they're all working towards a great masterpiece. But in the end of the day, we all learn from each other and we identify our position, our strength, and eventually we become a master because of that, because of that collective experience. That's very cool and could become a unique identifier for us. Well, and you know, another point I'll make with that, Herbert, is that where I said you have this instructive collaboration around the content, I literally mean around the content. So where there is, where we've put your video exchange between uh, Larry and you, th there is this section on the site, and I don't want to go back there because it'll take too much time, where you can add comments, you can record another video, where you can put a link to an article, add a PDF, um, and that is really very immersive learning, and and that's where you learn from each other, and and that's where you know. Rose might have a wonderful recording of, of Segovia or Vladimir Horowitz. She wants that to be part of this because we're talking about something specific. So there's also peers looking at your video if you, if you choose to make them available. And your peers can help you kind of get ready for that um, first video exchange with your teacher. Um, we have um, a couple people online, and Brad has uh, made a note about asking uh, if you have a question, just go ahead and post it in the chat box or put your hand up, and, and uh, we'll make sure you get your question answered. Um, I've got a couple of folks in, in the room here I know who have some experience with video as well. Okay. Um, I think um, 
some with Vimeo, uh, perhaps some with you, you see me. You see you. You see me was the first version, I guess. You see me. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? You see me. You guys remember that from CMU? Um, so I'm because I'm going through, and, and like Herbert, I get very excited about these capabilities of these tools and these systems, and I'm wondering how do they compare? I mean, I've got a working knowledge of Vimeo. Um, I post something, and then in the bubbles around it, individuals can post responses, so I get sort of this social response. Well, it's not social so much, but this instructional response, and then I go to the next video. Something I heard you say very early on that really resonates with me is the word curation, and how this tool is really a curation tool, and I love the idea of crowdsourcing, tagging, and such to the, to the data elements, if you will. Um, and I don't know, Amanda, if you don't mind me asking you, because you've used UCU, correct? Yeah. I've got to write that down. Um, is it similar in its curation ability? Can we save those videos and then go back and use them? Or how does it get? Yeah. It does. Yeah. We are able to um, use and create a library for each of the courses for the instructor and also for a college or a program. We're, we're able to save the videos from the students that have um, given us permission and we can use those in the future offering of courses. And then also the instructors are then able to bring them into the assignments and activities within UCU. Yeah, okay. So may have some similar capabilities to, uh, to what yeah. we're learning about today. Okay. Yeah, I, th uh, I think there are actually some, some similarities and we certainly looked at it because the very first time we met with um, uh, Herbert, I think it was. We were, I think, a gentleman from UCU was was in the room, and I think that the difference is that on, vi online video exchange learning is a concept. It's not a feature. It's not just a tool. It's building a video lecture library within which there are skills that need to be assessed, and the teacher teaches them and then the student learns them by the video exchange. And that's, that's just a, it sounds like it's splitting hairs, but it, it really isn't. And, and you can add bells and whistles and everything to what UCU has and what, you know, what we have, but the whole idea is flipping the classroom so that the students are watching the videos at home and working on it, and then their interaction is a mentoring relationship with their their teacher, and um, there's a lot of collaboration around that, and it's all built on the curriculum. Very cool. It's a very impressive uh, system you've constructed, and going back to the idea of the concept, I think you've done a great job of building your uh, two-minute elevator pitch to, to sort of explain what, uh, what the product does and how it's constructed. Um, personally, I'm challenged to think about how do, I, how do I see that fitting into the courses that I teach? Um, I do a leadership development program, and um, some of it it's a blended, blended program. And you know, are there places where I could be doing a better job of using this video dimension to it, uh, you know, to further the, the kind of communications we're having, which is all text right now? Or, or most yeah. Of the text. So, yeah, and I, from what I understand, when I was there, I don't think that everyone has UCU available to them. I don't think all of the colleges have it. Um, I, if I understand correctly, some of the colleges are completely independent and actually Drupal-based. So yeah. you know, there 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 is a difference there, and and that's an that's an open door for the music department. Um, and and I you know I've, I have so many ideas for the music and the arts and. Sculpture and painting and 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 obviously the music and dance and all of that. Just can you imagine, just as an incoming freshman, if you just could have an interaction with your teacher and kind of get your feet wet a little bit, that would be huge. But also just throughout the year, whether you're having your skills assessed throughout the semester or whether it's a quiz or a final exam, there's really nothing quite like getting the the feedback from the teacher. Right. Terrific. Well, I, I would ask you one, uh, two small favors, maybe. One is please don't mention this program to my wife or she'll have me take dance lessons again. 
<laughs> it didn't go well the first time. Uh, the second thing is you promised to give us a, a tip or two of some uh, good Napa Valley wines. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I remember the important things here, you know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, I can tell you that if you're looking at vintages, 2009 was a very wet, watery vintage, so you probably don't want to go there. 2011, likewise, was not so good. But I can tell you, 2012 and 2013 were fabulous. And you just need to stay with the good producers, the known names. And if you buy in those, those two years, you'll get really good wine. And we're known for Cabernet in our blend. So that's really, the, that's really the best advice I can give you, because to recommend one individual wine might offend a few friends. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Uh, can we have a uh, thank you for Patricia today? And uh, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today and, and sharing with us your project and your product. Uh, it, it's really exciting. And we do hope to be back to you in one form or the other. Yeah, that would be great. I would love to talk further. And, and like I said, I think maybe the first step is to go with some obvious subjects. And I'm always looking for an excuse to get back on campus and um, would be happy to come back and talk in person with anybody. That'd be terrific. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.